Hello again out there folks and welcome to another video by the team here at BlenderTech.com That's Blender T-E-K dot com Unity videos will soon have their own website. We currently use version 4.5.5 F1. Please like this video if it helps and subscribe for more videos on Unity 3D, Blender and coding. The team tries to add between 3 to 10 videos a day. And don't forget, create your way. In part 2 of a 3 part series we will be exploring more into basic unity physics. We've already covered colliders and rigid bodies however today we will be having more fun with physics and exploring what's called physics layers in unity. This allows us to have objects ignore collisions with a group of objects while everything still retains its components and other properties. This allows us to have objects in our games but only allow certain objects like bullets to interact with it and nothing else for example. To start off we'll create a new project from file new project and then select a path. As I've emphasized before organizing your projects is key because your folders will eventually become filled with thousands of files in hundreds of subfolders. I've already selected a path so I'm gonna paste it and then just hit create and then let's get going. Alright, so we now have an empty scene set up. Let's first set up our scene for today's lesson. The first thing we're going to do is create a sphere since it rolls a whole lot better than a box will. Similar to the cube created in the first part of this video series, we simply go to Game Object, Create Other, and instead of cube we're going to select sphere this time. So as you can see we have a nice sphere. Let's move it 4 units above the grid floor again by typing 0 4 0 into the position boxes under the transform component in the inspector window. If you don't see these input boxes make sure that sphere is selected in the hierarchy window. While we're at it let's rename the sphere back to character 1. So type in character 1 where right beside this checkbox where the name would be. There we go, our sphere is now named character 1. Next to finish setting up our scene, let's set up two planes. Again the same as before, we're going to be using them as floors. If you forget how to do this, select game object, create other, plane. So the first one, let's position it at 0, 1, 0. In the rotation boxes, let's leave it at 0, 0, but let's rotate it along the z-axis about 320 degrees. This way our sphere can roll down it. Let's rename it to Floor 1 so that we know which one is which. There we go, our plane is now named Floor 1. So the exact rotation angle that we've put in isn't super important, but we want it somewhere around 320 so that it's a nice hill idea for our sphere to roll down. Next, let's create another plane. So game object, create other, and plane again. This time, however, we're going to need it lower and at a different angle. So let's position it at 6, negative 4, and 0. And then for rotation, let's leave it at 0, 0, 35. And then let's name it Floor 2. So we now have one floor that it rolls down, that our character 1 will roll down, and then it will collide with Floor 2, which it will again roll down, and then it will roll down into infinity. Lastly, let's position our camera so that we can see what's happening in game view. Select the camera and the settings that I've found work best in the inspector window are a position of 6, negative 11, sorry, negative 1, and a Z of 11. And then use a rotation of 0, 180, 0. As you can see in our camera preview, you can now see character 1, floor 1, and floor 2. So that gives you an idea of what we'll see when we play this. Let's try playing our scene by hitting the play button up here. As you can see, nothing is happening. Remember why? 
We need to make sure that the sphere has a rigid body component added to it. If you've forgotten how to do this, uncheck the play button first and then with character 1 selected, go to component physics rigid body. Now let's try again. Hit play and see what happens. You'll now see that our sphere hits floor 1, then floor 2, then it rolls off into space-time dimension warp. Pretty boring, right? I promise it will get more fun. Uncheck play to get back to scene view. I can now show you how physics layers work. As I said at the start, physics layers will allow us to have objects ignore collisions with groups of other objects. If you've lost character 1, just simply deselect play so that it appears at the location we originally in specified. With floor 2 selected, under the inspector window here you will see layer with a drop down box and it should be on default by default obviously. Select the drop down box and click on add layer. You will see all the standard built in layers but under the first user layer let's create a new layer and call it layer 1. Now select floor 2 again and under the layers drop down box in the inspector window change it from default to layer 1. So now everything is on the default layer except floor 2. Let's play this scene and see what happens. As you can see it acted exactly the same way as before. It rolled off floor 1 onto floor 2 and then off into in the abyss. So uncheck play to get back to the scene view. To change this we're going to change the properties of our physics layers. Let's start by opening the physics settings. This is done in the main toolbar under edit, project settings, physics. You will now see in the inspector windows the physics manager. Here you can change things like gravity. For example, gravity is 9.81 meters a second down, which is real world gravity, but you can change that if you wanted to, and a few other things, but we're going to leave that out for now. What we're going to focus on is this layer matrix here. The checkbox, as you see, is called a matrix, and in this case, we would call it a collision, collision matrix. As you might have guessed, we can allow certain layers to interact or not to interact with other layers by checking or unchecking. Read the top row of layers and see where they intersect with the left row of layers by basically drawing a line across the two. Let's try unchecking the matrix box between default and layer 1. Let's see what happens when we do this. Hit play and find out. As you can see it hits floor 1 but it goes straight through floor 2 into the abyss. So what we have here is using this layers manager or this layers matrix I guess we've allowed floor 2 right here it still has all its physical properties it can still interact with other objects and such however it cannot interact with layer 1 it's still there it's still rendering it's still in our game it still has all its components but again it doesn't interact with layer 1 so you can now try adding your own layers and assigning them to different game objects to see what happens. This allows you to have game objects that only interact with certain other game objects. Say you want your player to be able to hit a wall but say our computer players are ghosts and can walk right through walls. Layers is one way of doing this however you're only limited by your creativity and that's a bad example. So you've now filled your brain compartments and decompartments with the idea of collision layers. In part 3 of this 3 part series, we'll be getting into the real fun. We'll be going into the most fun stuff called physical materials. This way we'll be able to create stuff such as ice, bouncy balls, concrete, and so on. So we can change the sphere into a super bouncy ball that bounces all over and hits different objects. We can make our planes really sticky, like they're, like our objects are sliding down glue. Or we could make our planes into something like ice so that our objects kind of slide right down it. Thanks for watching this video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. Again, that's Blender T E. 
k.com. If you enjoyed this video and it helped, please like it and don't forget to subscribe for more Unity 3D, Blender, and coding tutorial videos. We try to add between 3 to 10 a day. If for some reason you dislike this video, don't just leave. Please add a comment that tells us what we can improve on so that each video gets better and better. For private concerns, we can be emailed at info at blendertech.com. We also take input as to what we should add more of, and we also take tutorial requests. See you next time, and remember, create your way.